Welcome to 7th episode of Android Beginners Tutorial. If you are new to this channel, please hit on the subscribe button and press the bell icon. In today's tutorial, we will discuss about life cycle of an activity. In previous episode, we discussed about how to add text view, edit text and button. If you haven't seen that, please click on the iCard above. So let's start our video. Activity is the screen user can see in front of him when using an application. For example, when you launch your application, you first launch a screen. That is an activity. We can say that it is one screen of Android apps user interface. This picture, which I got from Android developers website, is a nice indication of what happens when an application runs when an activity gets launched and when you move away from that activity. What happens to that activity and which methods will be run. In brief, this picture will describe you about the activity lifecycle. When your activity first gets launched, it goes to onCreate method, then goes to onStart, then onResume. Then you can see the activity running. The green block here indicates your activity is running and user can see the screen. When another activity comes into the foreground, activity goes to on post method. If the user returns to the activity, it goes to on resume, then activity is running. If the user does not get back to it, then the activity is no longer visible and calls on stop method. When it is an on stop and the user navigates to the activity, it goes to on restart, then on start, then on resume, and the activity is running. User can again see the screen. But if it is an on stop and the activity is finishing or being destroyed by the system, it goes to on destroy before the activity shut down. If it is an on stop, and apps with higher priority need memory and app process killed. User navigates to the activity, then goes to on create, then on start, then on resume, and activity is running again. Now I will demonstrate this using an application. So I created a new application and gave name as lifecycle events. This is the main activity, the Java code and activity main.xml, the XML code. We will code in the Java part only. You can see the overrided method on create here, which is in the life cycle. Let's type a code to show the log so that while running, we can understand when this method is called. So type log.d in bracket, I need to give tag and a message. I am giving tag as lifecycle events, then a comma, and message as in on create, and then put a semicolon. The next method in activity lifecycle is on start. Right click and click on generate, then click on override methods. Select on start method. Like this, we can override on start method. Inside this, need to type log statement. For that, copy that from on create and paste it in on start and change in on create to in on start. The next method is on resume. Continue the same step for on create. Override method on resume. and paste the log statement and change it into on resume. The next method in life cycle is on post. Override the method, then paste the log and change it to in on post. The next method is on stop. Right click, then generate, 
override methods. There you can see on stop method. Paste the log and change it to in on stop. The next method is on destroy. Repeat the same steps as before. and change the log message to in on destroy. The next method and life cycle is on restart. In an easy way, you can start typing on restart and then Android Studio will suggest methods related to what you typed. And you can override that method by simply clicking on that. Then paste the log statement and change the log message to in on restart. Now run your application in the emulator. I am using Genymotion emulator. If you need to know how to download it and use it as Android Studio plugin, please check the link above or you can check the description box. When the app is launched, in the log cat, you can see the logs are printed. In on create, in on start, in on resume. Now in the image of life cycle, when the activity is launched, on create, on start, on resume is called and then the activity is running. You can compare the image and the log cat now. The next case is when I click on the back button. In logcat, on pause is called first, then on stop and on destroy. In the image also, you can see the same methods in order before the app is shut down. So this is the life cycle when click on the back button. Now I am relaunching that application. As before, it calls the method on create on start and on resume then the app is running now i am clicking on the home button then while checking on the log cat you can see on pause and on stop is called it's like the activity is no longer visible but it is not completely shut down now either i can destroy totally just as before by clicking on the back button or navigate back to the activity. So when I navigate back to the activity, from on stop, on restart is called, then on start again, then on resume, and the activity is running. So this is the life cycle when navigate back to the activity. In short, these are the life cycle events of an activity. You can use these methods in your project to do something while launching and shutting down an app, such as initializing some objects while launching, releasing memory in on destroy method before an activity is shut down, and reinitializing in on resume, etc. It's up to you what you want to use these methods and what you want to do with them. Even if you didn't use these methods in your project, super.onstart Super dot on resume like statements will run. If you need to add something, you can override these methods. So I hope you are now clear about the life cycle events of an activity and you are now able to use this concept in your future projects. If you are new to this video, please hit on the subscribe button and keep sharing to those who are in need. We'll come up with the next video. Thanks for watching.